All right, now that I've got my daily dose of coffee, I wanted to sit down and answer some of your questions in an old-fashioned Q&A video. In fact, the last time I did one of these videos was back in December, back in the good old days of 2019. And when I made that video, I don't think I was even at 1,000 subs. And now, in honor of our community growing past 8,000 subscribers, which is crazy, I thought it was about time that I do another one of these videos. And so I hopped onto Instagram and asked what questions you guys had for me, specifically regarding all things college, pre-med, and CS. And of course, you didn't disappoint. All right, let's get into the questions. The first one is, do you think getting a degree in CS is necessary? Internet is there, why not use it? This is a great question, and I hope that over the years its answer will keep evolving as education becomes more and more democratized. As of now though, I believe that a CS degree helps to one, eliminate some of those barriers that exist to entering the tech industry, and two, teaches those fundamentals to know how to think about technology. So suppose your goal is to get a tech job. I've met plenty of people who've entered the field from non-traditional backgrounds, so a degree is not necessary. But that degree makes it a lot easier to get past the first gate in the hiring process when recruiters are looking at resumes. From a company's perspective, there's some guarantee that if you've completed a CS degree, you've spent a significant number of hours studying the subject and have the skills to quickly pick up new concepts. But with the alternatives like self-studying or boot camps, a lot more is unknown. Like how many hours have you spent? How much have you learned? Is what you learned either broad enough or relevant enough to benefit this team? If you can prove this through personal projects and rocking the interview, then a degree or the lack thereof won't make much of a difference in hiring. But once you're on the team, you'll need to know how to design complex systems, understand user requirements, and write extendable code. And while a CS degree won't teach you these specifics, it'll help you understand how to think about these things and why they're so important. So long story short, to code, a degree isn't necessary, but to be a well-rounded engineer, it's pretty useful. All right, the next question is, what advice would you give to college freshman CS majors? Number one, take classes outside your major. As a freshman, I was that kid who planned every single class of my college career to the T. As a result, there wasn't much room to take advantage of my liberal arts school curriculum. But the semester where I took CS on a whim completely transformed my career, much to the dismay of my parents. And even if you don't have plans on switching your major like me, it's so valuable to invest your time in broadening your learning in anything from English to psychology to arts. Number two, go to office hours. All of college, I took so much pride in the fact that I could figure out problems on my own. And I can probably count on my hands the number of times that I actually went to office hours. And while my grades turned out fine, I did miss out on a lot of really important opportunities, like forming strong repertoire with my professors. Practically speaking, this is useful when you start asking for recommendation letters. And a strong letter is written by someone who knows you beyond just that kid who gets A's in their class. And TBH, I don't know if I had that with any of my professors. So even if you don't have questions about the upcoming PSET, go to office hours to discuss an article that you read or career questions or just to learn more about each other. And it'll help you learn to communicate. Once I started working, I was faced with a huge learning curve. And initially, I struggled to communicate my questions or was hesitant to do so because I never gained that practice in college. So yeah, locking myself up in my room to crank out some code worked fine in college, but definitely wouldn't pass in the workplace. Finally, it's where you can make new friends. A lot of your four years in college will be spent with people from your major, whether it's while struggling to stay awake in lecture, pairing up on projects, or commiserating over a final project at 4 a.m. So it makes sense to make friends within your major and office hours is a great place to meet them. Number three, look into doing research. My freshman fall, I was so keen on doing research and that drive led to some of the most fulfilling experiences of my college career through my research projects at MIT. And I did make two other videos talking about this. So as to not repeat myself, please check those videos out, linked down below. The next question is, as a non-CS major, which CS slash math classes would be helpful to build a foundation in CS? As the likes of Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, and Stephen Hawking have said, everyone should learn how to code. And college is the one time when you can truly focus on yourself, your own growth, and your own learning. And to achieve this, I believe that almost every college student, irrespective of major, should take an introductory computer science class. 
And let me tell you, this will probably go down as one of the hardest classes you'll take in college, but it'll also immerse you into a completely different world, teaching you things about problem solving, like how can I break down a complex problem? How can I use minimal resources to figure something out? And modularity, like how can I split up a project efficiently? How can tasks be divided and delegated? And design thinking, like how can I build something that is easy to use? How can I understand what a user or a reader or a student wants? A bit more of a practical class that can be applied in the real world is web development. At my college, we had an intro class that taught HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And generally, most CS classes taught in college are more theoretical, so a class like this or databases can be a lot more useful. As far as math classes go, I would recommend discrete math or combinatorics. Besides the topics covered in the class, which are interesting to me at least, this will also teach you about how to write proofs, which are step-by-step -step breakdowns of every logical step needed to prove a theorem or principle. These are tedious and a bit annoying, but will help teach logical thinking and how to break down arguments or solutions into as many discrete pieces as possible. Maybe you're not entering college as a CS major, but want to make the switch. One of the questions that I received was, what was your transition from pre-med to CS like? I actually didn't make that mental shift away from medicine until my senior year, so I was doing both concurrently. But the transition itself to CS was incredibly positive for a few reasons. First, it meant no more labs. So for most pre-med classes, each class has a lecture and a lab section, which collectively take up to six hours a week. So instead of having my weeks consumed by class time, with CS, I had a lot more free time to myself to learn the material organically. Switching to CS also meant a lot more homework. So my CS program specifically was a lot more project instead of exam heavy, which I at least preferred, even though the projects usually took a lot more time than say studying for an exam. So many of my nights were spent on the floor of my friend's room, debugging P-sets hours before the deadline. And maybe I'm weird, but those nights are what made my CS experience so fun and memorable. CS was also less competitive. From my perspective at least, it seemed like our CS program was not that cutthroat. Yeah, we were all hustling for interviews or deadlines, but no one was running around bragging about their six-figure offer letter or bringing each other down. But with pre-med, it seemed like people were always trying to get a leg up, always trying to perfect every small lab report and exam. So for someone like me, it always left me questioning, am I not doing enough? Why am I not as stressed as my peers? And now let's get to the most important questions, like what's a must visit in India? So generally, I think South India is highly underrated. So cities like Chennai are amazing to witness South India's vast history, mix of old and new architecture and distinctly unique cultures. The next question is, what are your favorite shows? So as made obvious by my many GIF references, Friends is my absolute favorite. And it's such a classic that I've watched through at least four or five times, so enough said. I also really like Jane the Virgin and The Good Place, which managed to mix some drama, some comedy, and some romance, all while being presented in a pretty unique format and bringing in more complex ideas about family and philosophy. And the last question is, do you miss Pani Puri and samosas? Yeah, who doesn't? But right now our frozen samosas will suffice. And yeah, that's it for today's video. There were a lot of questions to get through, so if I missed yours, I'll either cover it in a future video or answer it privately. And yeah, if you like this video or maybe you learned something new, please give it a big like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.